Oh, lucky people of Minneapolis who were old enough to go to clubs like the 7th Street entry in the early 80s. This video happens to be from 1981. It's the replacements on stage. <laughs> But for those of us like myself and Jim McGuinn, program director at The Current, we didn't grow up here, but boy, did we feel their influence. You actually warmed up for them um, when you were in your college band. Yeah, I mean, uh, I grew up outside of Chicago, and we all, uh, the replacements, Who's Do, the Minneapolis music scene was what we sort of looked up to. That was the leader music scene in the Midwest if you were a kid coming of age at that point in the mid late 80s and it was definitely a thrill getting uh, twice the band I was in got to open shows for the replacements and you know like the reputation you never knew what you were going to get from the replacements they could be completely brilliant and complete mess often within the same song and I think it was that high wire act that they were walking you didn't know if they were going to make it across or if they were going to fall and watching that was what made them so spectacular. You tell a story in the movie Color Me Obsessed, which yeah. is playing here at the Parkway tonight. They don't appear, the replacements do not appear in it, but people tell stories about mm -hmm. them, like the case of the missing steaks. Yeah, you know, after the, one of those <laughs> gigs that my band opened for, the, the, the mats came over to our like band house, we were college band house, and uh, we had a party, and somehow at the end of the night, Bob Stinson stuffed a bunch of meat in his jacket as they took off, and we were left wondering, what exactly were they going to do with frozen meat in the van for the next few hours? The, the mystery remains. Exactly. So as program director of The Current, yeah. bands come into town and there are a couple notables, a couple local notables. And topping the list... Oh yeah, well you know, what we see uh, hundreds of, of new bands from all over the world, they stop by The Current and inevitably they ask about two artists, Prince or The Replacements, or both and they want to know everything we can tell them about, about those bands because these are bands that uh, you know, were, were obviously huge and influential in the Twin Cities, but that reach extended out to musicians all over the world. So the replacements never achieved the, the commercial success that yeah. Prince did. We don't know for a fact that they wanted to, but why didn't they? I think there's so many reasons and there's so many uh, uh, things that go into whether an artist is going to ultimately have that hit or not. And it could have to do with the record label, it could have to do with the time, it could have to do with the fashion, it could have to do with the, your, your attitude. It, I think with the replacements, they were a little bit ahead of their time, actually. You can check out a director's cut of the fan documentary, Color Me Obsessed, Friday night at the Parkway Theater. All these items, plus hundreds more, will be auctioned off in a silent auction to benefit Slim Dunlap, the former guitarist of the replacements.